come on in and say, hey, I'm going to be playing with some 21-inch mesh. And I know that if you love working with mesh, 10-inch is the fan favorite, but this can be so fun to play with. So we're going to be making a reef kit using 21 inch mesh and we're going to pair it up with a complimentary 10 inch mesh. So um, stay tuned. This is actually a reef kit. So you get all of this together. You get the 21 inch mesh, the 10 inch, and this is an orange um, and red natural jute, poly jute mesh. Both of these are poly jutes. You also get the gnome sign in this wreath kit, the burlap frame, wreath frame, and you get three 10 yard rolls of ribbon in this wreath kit. Some additional tools that you will want to have to make the wreath kit is, I use a staple gun and I use an electric one. Some sharp scissors for your ribbon. Um, I use wire cutters, some floral wire or pipe cleaners for your bow, and then I use pipe cleaners for my sign. This video will be the tutorial for this wreath kit. So if you buy um, this wreath kit or any wreath kit that has 21 inch mesh, this is a great tutorial. All right, I'm gonna start with prepping my sign. And y'all, I don't necessarily have a formula on the way I do things for what order I do things. It's whatever strikes me. It's whatever mood strikes me. And today I'm gonna start by adding my pipe cleaners to my sign. Is place our sign off to the side. Of course, you can put one in the center or you can use the other side. I tend to lean to the left. It's just who I am. I like the way that looks. And so that means that before I put on my mesh, I can look and see where I need to put my pipe cleaners. So this way, I can kind of get a good visual of where I need to put my pipe cleaners. So let's start, let's start. Good morning, Nancy. All right, so I'm just gonna start by adding some pipe cleaners with my quarter inch staples. And again, whenever I do this, I always warn y'all, if you're not sure that you have the right size staples, don't staple it. Some little tricks of the trade though, if you're uh, making a wreath with a sign that is not as thick as these are, I know these particular signs will accommodate a quarter inch staple easily. Um, but if you're not sure, take some of your leftover ribbon, like from where you've cut dovetailed ribbon and scraps of ribbon, or some people will use foam or felt or whatever, and place it on your location where you want to add your staples to give it more depth in between the sign and uh, when you add the staple. So it will help prevent that staple from going all the way through your signs. You know, I I will buy signs from sign makers that will, like from um, Crafty Tessie, she hand makes signs, she cuts them wood signs, but her wood is thinner than this, so I always build it up by adding some cushion in between that and the staples. So let's set that aside our cute little gnome, let that glue set up and let's play with mesh. So first of all, for my first poof, I'm going to fold it over and look how uneven that cut is, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna fold it over and I've got about eight inches of my fold. So my poof would be about eight inches. If I want a larger poof, I can go a little bit bigger. And I'm just gonna gather that up so that the raw edge is down here. I'm gonna gather that up. This then becomes my first poof. So see where I'm hanging on to that? So I take the raw edge and I'm going to place it on the top ring of my um, wreath frame. 
So I will add that into my wreath frame right there, raw edge facing the frame, and tighten that down. Now, the really thing that, uh, that I say don't freak out is this whole roll is gonna go right down here on the floor. It just flows better for me when I just throw it on the floor. Boom, it's gone. Now, a really easy way to measure from here on out is to take your mesh, skip the next um, twist tie, and go to this one. So I'm going to measure by pulling this over, passing that one up, and lining it up with the next one. So skip one, next one. That is now going to be where I'm going to gather my mesh and sometimes I'll just go ahead and like stick my hand in there, give it a little body, and then I bring back and put it in the, in the next twist tie. It's a simple way. You don't need a cutting mat. You don't need a yardstick or a ruler. And now I have my first poof. First poof. So I'm going to repeat that all the way around the top row. I'm going to skip this one, go to the next one, gather up my mesh in the palm of my hand. If I need to give it a little straightening out first and then push it back into the next closest twist tie. and that will help with getting those even poofs. So you see how those are the same size? I'm not worried about that first one yet. We'll, sh we'll show you that when we get all the way around. So I'm just gonna repeat this process all the way around the top. All right, so this happens, and I, this is a great learning lesson right here. Hey, Miss Renee, how are you? So this particular roll, uh, <laughs> Mandy, I've never heard that one. Thank you for painting the town. Um, so this particular roll was split. You'll notice that it's not complete. That's because the rest of the roll is on the floor. I'm not panicked because I can um, manipulate this. I might have to modify this one just a little bit because I still have this one and, to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my poof, I measure it out, make my poof, and put that in that twist tie. But what I would normally do is if it was still all connected, I would go directly into this one again, and then I would directly go into the next one again where I started, and then I would pull it down into the next um, twist tie down below. So it would look like this when I'm done. But because this roll is split, I'm going to have to modify that a little bit. But if you got this kit or you're working with 21 inch mesh, normally you would be able to do one more poof right in here and then just pull your mesh straight down and then start making poofs from here. But since this one is a little um, different than most 21 inch mesh, I mean, sometimes that'll happen. I'm just simply going to cut off that tail and boom. We're just gonna start from this point. Um, actually, you, yes, let me think how I wanna do that. Cause that's, yeah, I'm gonna put a poof right in here. All right, so let me set this over and start another poof. I'm gonna fold that over. Gather it up just like I did at the very beginning. Make sure my mesh is even. Throw that on the floor. And we're gonna add that right in there. Easy peasy. Well, Miss Sonia, good morning. Then, 
I can resume what I was doing. So I can add one more poof in here. On top, so this is my starter poof. I'm gonna add one more poof on top of that. Now, I'm gonna turn this around so y'all can see it. I'm going to just make this tight, stretch it, and put it down here and start on the second row. So this was my starter poof. It's, it's a little crazy right now. And so now I've brought my mesh down to the outer ring. Now I'm just gonna start making poofs again. So I'm gonna measure out, skip one, go to the next one, measure out, gather it up, and put it into the next frame. I'm trying to position this so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing because um, on the outer row, it's a little bit more challenging because it's blocked by the top mesh. So now we've started our second row. Ta-da! I'm going to repeat that process. I'm going to go past this twist tie, go to the next one, and that's how long uh, my mesh needs to be. And I try to put the edges on the, the downside. So the edges of the mesh will be facing the wire frame. Okay, I have to bring it back here to do this. It's, it's hard to do backwards. My arms and fingers were not meant to go backwards. But you can start to see where I've added those poofs at, at the bottom ring. I'm going to skip a twist tie, measure to the next one, gather it up. All right. All right, so now we're at the end of our 21 inch roll of mesh. Please note that it will not take the entire roll of mesh. Save this though, because there's plenty there to work with in the future. So when you get to the end, I will, hold on, this is why it stays on the floor. I'm just simply going to cut that off and you know what, I think I'm gonna cut that off about three to four inches. Some people like to pull that back this way and then use a zip tie. And it's not a bad method. Um, it's not one that I always use, but let me get a smaller zip tie. And they will bring it back and like tuck it underneath here. <clears throat> and then kind of zip tie it onto the wire frame. Make sure my zip tie is facing the wrong right way, not the wrong way, the right way. There we go. So that way that little tail won't flip out during movement, transportation, etc. Look, I even have my glasses on and I still can't hit the hole. There we go. Y'all, the struggle is real. Okay. So I'm just going to zip tie that there. And now I'm completely done with this 21 inch mesh. It can go bye bye. That is our base, but we're not done. We're gonna actually take some of this 10 inch, oops, avalanche, I just knocked off some ribbon. And we're going to add some flare by adding some curls in here. So this will make a very deep, lush 
I mean, it's already plush and lush, but we're going to make it colorful and we're going to make it even more elaborate by just simply adding some 10 inch mesh to here. So for this, I'm going to cut 10 inch, 10 inch strips. We're going to need a total of 36 strips. So there's two, three, four, five. They're going on the floor. Six, seven, eight. And again, this roll of mesh is spliced together. They ran out. So think about a factory line and they're at the end of the bolt. I get it. I get it. And it's not going to cause me any indigestion whatsoever. However, I am going to cut off just a little bit on this edge because it's a little more frayed where they joined it together. We don't want to start out with phrase. All right. I'm going to do the same thing on this edge. And I was told from the manufacturer that when they have to splice it together, they actually add extra on to the roll, whether it be a ribbon or mesh. And let's do one more. And then if I if I need to cut more, I will. I should be close to my number though. Once a nurse, always a nurse interested in things related to your field. Yes, absolutely, Nola. I know my my ears perk up too. When when we talk about when they have someone that's talking about their nursing career. Absolutely. You were back to work in three months. <laughs> oh, Beth, July 20th. Okay. All right, so now we cut these 10 inch curls or 10 inch strips and we're just simply going to make curls out of them. Now, you can hold them in your fingers like this because we're just going to put two curls in each twist tie. Or if you have a clothespin or something and you don't want to hang on to those. So uh, we've got two curls. The main thing is, is you want to take that cut edge and you want to have it facing the wreath so that it's not facing upwards. The raw edge is going to go towards your wreath base, which will help reduce fraying. So in each one of our twist ties, look, we're going to add those two curls. Let me repeat that again slowly. And you'll notice that the mesh naturally rolls towards it. So I'm going with the curl. I'm going with the curl, making my curl. Roll, roll, roll. And the curls are about um, the size of a quarter. Raw side down and put it in the um, uh, twist tie. So obviously we have two raw edges. So I, I'm taking this edge and rolling it on the inside. So that's that one's covered, right? So it's inside the roll. Then on the second one, I face it down. 
so that when I add it to my twist tie, the raw edge is actually facing the wreath itself. Let me see where I need to go with this. The frame, so the raw edge is away from me. I have one stray. And this is poly jute mesh. I love working with poly jute. Um, I don't. I, I like the appearance of it. It's kind of a rustic almost. I don't know if you would call it that. I don't know. It's so ver versatile, and especially this natural one. It this one is great for everyday farmhouse fall. Um. I use it at Christmas time for more like your um, farmhouse kind of Christmas looks. So I love the natural poly jute. That's probably the most bought out of our store. So I, when I order this color mesh, I try to order twice as much as any other mesh because it is definitely the most purchased in both the 10 inch and the 12, uh, 21 inch. are okay guys this is adding our curls look at this so this wreath let me come out uh, just a little bit more look at how full this wreath base is already so you can kind of see this is the wreath we made yesterday and this one was made with two 10 inch mesh and we used uh, a, a cruffle ruffle cruffle scruffle method so you can see side by side, kind of, let me bring that up a little bit more, you know, comparison. So it's a nice, full, lush wreath. The wreath kit, you have your sign that goes in the wreath kit, and then you also have three rolls of ribbon. This particular method does not necessarily need ribbon tails. So we did some ribbon tails in this one, very few, we only did ribbon tails like on the outside, but over here, this one, which is a 10 inch wreath mesh, we did ribbon tails in every twist tie. This one already has kind of a lot of decor. You don't need a whole lot, but we definitely have opportunity to add some color with our bows. So you could do like two small bows and a large bow, you could do a bow like this one over here. Let me see if I can zoom in over there a little bit. So this one has like the one bow with tails hanging down. You could do that. Look, there's all kinds of possibilities, right? All kinds of possibilities. Let's come back down here and hold on. I gotta take a breather. Okay, let's add our sign and then we're gonna be able to judge where we're gonna go from there. So when I add my sign, I take into consideration where my twist ties are at and um, which, you know, am I gonna be covering up twist ties? What's happening there? I always take a look at that. And for this one, I actually think I'm gonna go right about here. Let's zoom in. So I think ahead, I'm thinking ahead, am I gonna do two bows, two smaller bows and a bigger bow? Am I just gonna do one big elaborate bow? But you always wanna kind of look at, um, if I did this and one bow, it kind of makes it uneven. It's awkward. So I look more like a triangle shape. So if we did the sign here, 
a bow here and bow here, that would be a triangle. Um, if I do the sign and three bows, small one, small one, and large one, here's my triangle. So you just kind of, you kind of want to have a vision and there's no wrong answers. No wrong answers. If it looks awkward when you get done, ask yourself if you've got that triangle effect going on or um, does it need maybe, you know, if you have two objects, focal points on it, does it need maybe a smaller third focal point? Odd numbers always work best. Um, when it comes to arranging. Look at y'all. All right, so let me add this sign. Y'all, when you add your sign, don't pull it so tight that you're smashing down your mesh. Can you see? That is smashing down that mesh. Let up on it and just let it loosely lay on top. And hold on, I gotta twist this back here. I'm going to feed my pipe cleaners down through the weave of my mesh. Don't scoot your mesh out of the way. Just feed it down through the weave of the mesh. And you just want to slightly put a little bit of tension on it. And now when I shake it, as long as it's not flopping all over the place, look at when I shake that, that's secure and it's not smashing my mesh. And then, of course, once I have my placement good, I will go ahead and finish tying off my pipe cleaners and cut those off. As long as I know it's snug, ribbon, ribbon. So I'm gonna set our little gnome guy off to the side here and bring out my easy bow maker. And the ribbon that comes with this kit are all three of these rolls, and they're fun. So this has got that rust color, it's got some sunflower, and that sunflower, of course, matches the sunflower in our Nomi hat. That black and white gingham helps pull some of that black and white gingham from the border. And of course, that rust color is a nice contrasting color next to our mesh. So we're going to be, you get all three rolls of this in your kit. I actually have some of this open already, so I'm not going to open those rolls. I'm going to use the ones that I have open. So for my larger one, I'm going to cut my first tail about seven inches and make my bow. My bow loop is going to be six inches. And for this one... We're gonna use four loops on the bottom of this beautiful rust color two and a half inch. So I'm gonna make four loops. And my tails are about seven inches. My loops are six inches. This will be my larger bow. Then my next color is going to be this rust um, indoor velvet. This is beautiful for fall. I love this indoor velvet rust color. Mm, mm, mm. And it just it just looks amazing. For this one, I'm going to also do two loops but I'm gonna bring them in about an inch, so they're gonna be about five inch loops. And voila, our one and a half inch black and white gingham check will be our top colors, top ribbon. And we're gonna do four loops, two on each side for it.
All right, so I have two loops on each side of each ribbon. Let me take a piece of my floral wire and let's wrap this up. Sheena, good morning. Good morning. This will be the large bow. And I'm going to repeat this, but in a smaller proportions for our second bow. And I'm just going to lay this out and we'll fluff it and get it to play nice shortly. Let's go ahead and make the second one. And it's going to be the same formula, but we're going to start out with shorter and we're going to go smaller loops. So instead of a six inch loop, we're going to go more like a between a four and a five. Actually, I'm going to make it a five. So it's going to be a little bit shorter. Have you ever used indoor velvet ribbon before or even indoor outdoor? It gives it a whole new layer of texture. It's fun. I like working with textures, different textures when I make things. And the gingham, the gingham. Go a little bit shorter. So each loop that I made, I just went a little bit shorter on each one. Let's bring it out. Let's see what this is going to look like. Look, and just about that time, I get a message that my internet's being wonky. Did I lose anybody? All right, so we're going to add our bow. Remember when you go to add your bow, you don't want to add a bow right on a twist tie because that will cause your bow to sink into the mesh. You actually want your bow on top of the mesh kind of floating like the highest point. If you put it right in a twist tie, it will sink in and um, it looks like it's smashing down your mesh when it's really not. So just like when we added the sign, we don't wanna pull the bow so tight or the wires on the bow so tight that it's pulling our mesh or smashing it. But what we do wanna do is make sure it's taut and um, it's not going to wiggle around. We don't want to pull too tight, but tight enough. It's the happy medium. And I'm feeding my wire down through the weave of the mesh and I'm bringing it around the back side, between around a wire frame. Ooh, look at that. So I make sure I kind of get an idea of where I want it positioned before I tighten it completely down and then I'll finish fluffing it here shortly. I like that. Also, if it feels awkward, y'all, here is um, another tip. Touch the item. So see how this bow is almost touching the sign or at least giving the illusion it is? If we had the bow clear over here, it would look like it's disconnected. So sometimes just by moving it a little bit closer, and if you look at this one up here, as example, like the sunflowers are right next, everything kind of is flowing together. 
So sometimes take that step back and look and go, do I need to just move it over a half an inch? Is that what's making it look awkward? Or an inch or whatever. Um, so having a part of your design out a little way, come down. Oh, I didn't dovetail these. I'll do it once I add it. So the, I guess there is a little bit of science to it or formula. Oh, I always go with what looks good. Let's take him down and let's hang this one up and see, get that visual. Oh my goodness. This is 21 inch mesh, y'all. 21 inch mesh. He's crooked. Let's put him back up there. So there's your triangle that I was referring to, and I still might scoot this one. So we've got a triangle pattern. Our focal point is going this way, and this is actually connecting these. And then the ribbon are kind of touching each other here. So that helps with that whole flow thing. But there is an option for a style design using this wreath kit and of course 21 inch mesh i love 21. all right y'all have a great rest of your wednesday and i will catch you maybe tomorrow morning have a good day